Hi everyone, and today I'm going to be installing Linux on my netbook. So my netbook is the Acer Aspire 1 533. Pretty old, slow computer, but Linux will be the perfect choice for it. Now currently it is running Ubuntu 13.04, and this is still a little bit slow, so I'm going to try out the new Linux Mint 15. Now, what you're going to do to download Linux Mint 15, there is this USB creator tool which will allow you to take an ISO image and turn it into a USB install disk, in a sense. So you just plug this USB drive in, boot from it, and install. So I am going to be putting the link for this tool in the description, so check there if you want to download this tool. And once you open up the tool, you will be able to download the ISO image. Now, if you've previously downloaded an ISO image that you'd rather use, you can go ahead and use that here. But since I have not downloaded it yet, I'm going to go ahead and check this box that says download ISO. Now this download could take a while depending on the speed of your internet connection. On my internet connection, it took six hours. Now, I did download a Linux ISO previously and it was about half the size, but it only took 10 minutes. So it may not be so dependent on your internet speed, but it may depend on the download mirror that you download it from. So if you are experiencing slow download speeds, you might want to check out the Linux Mint website, which I'll put down in the description, and then you'll be able to download from a different mirror. So one thing to keep in mind before you click next is make sure that you're selecting the right drive. Do not select a drive in your computer. This will potentially wipe out everything that is on that drive, so make sure it is not your hard drive that you have your data on because it could mess up your Windows installation. So just make sure you are selecting your USB drive that you previously plugged in. You are probably going to get this warning that says yes or no. And basically it's telling you everything it's gonna do. Just read that over, make sure you're writing to the right drive letter and you should be good to go. Now you will be extracting the files here. In my case, the extraction did take place with 7-zip. I think that's pretty standard. Um, I didn't have it installed, so you don't need to worry about having 7-zip installed. So you should be okay in that case. Once it finishes extracting, you're going to get this progress bar. Now it will warn you that the progress bar is not going to move while you're installing. It is going to stay still. So don't cancel or anything. It's still working even though the progress bar is not moving. It'll just move all the way to the end when the process is finished. So just wait for that. Mine took about 10 to 15 minutes. If it starts taking over 20, still don't worry. It could just be your computer's a little bit slower than mine is. But if it does take a long time, you can cancel it. It isn't going to mess anything up. You'll just have to reformat your USB drive and maybe try again with a different ISO image from a different Linux distribution just to see if the program's working. Maybe it was just a problem with your download. So once that is done, we can go ahead and exit out of the program, unplug our USB flash drive, and move over to our computer. So now we're going to boot into the Linux installation, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that camera and give you some live updates as I go along. So let's go ahead and watch that. So here is the Acer Aspire 1, and I've also got my flash drive that we put the Linux Mint installation onto. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the USB port here. And if I put it in the right way, it'll fit. Yep. There it is, plugged right in. Now we're gonna go ahead and press the power button. And this is going to go really fast, so you need to look for the boot menu. I know mine is F12 ahead of time. Sorry about the uh, camera going out of focus there. So I didn't even need to bother with going into the boot menu. I have it automatically set up to just go ahead and go to USB. So I'm going to go ahead and say start Linux Mint. You could do that by pressing the enter key. That's the first option here. And we'll go into this white screen. Now this is just it setting up the graphics or whatever. And on this computer, I have serious problems with the graphics. There's not very many drivers out there for Linux. It's really hard to get a hand of. And basically you're just going to have to wait for it to come up. So we do have a cursor, that's good news. Uh, I have attempted Linux installations before and I have only been able to get to the terminal, no graphical user interface at all. So this is good news. We're getting some sort of, I would call it a taskbar, but I know it's not called that because that's what it's called in Windows. This isn't Windows, this is Linux. So we are getting somewhere with this. Yes, we have some icons. And we are booted into the operating system. Now this is not installed on our hard drive yet, so you need to keep that in mind. We're just running off the USB key, and here we see where it says install Linux Mint. Now this is the point where you would say try out the operating system, see if it's right for you, anything like that. Um, I already know that I definitely want to install this onto my hard drive, so we're going to go ahead and go here where it says install Linux Mint. Now you do need to keep in mind that if you are replacing your Windows installation, 
you need to see if the wireless drivers are available for Linux for your computer. Now, I know I've been running Ubuntu for a while and I know I'll be able to get the wireless drivers some, some way or another. And so I'm not too concerned about that. I always could go back to Ubuntu if for some reason this doesn't work out. But if you are really dependent on this computer, you are going to want to be careful about that. Definitely test everything out that you're going to need to do in this sort of live CD environment, even though it's running off a USB key. Just make sure you can do everything you need to do if this is your main computer, because you do not want to be stuck both without your data, without anything. Now you can set it up as a dual boot. That might be a good option, but I'm just going to wipe everything clean, start over. So we obviously want English. I do speak English as my primary language. We'll click continue. And for best results, please ensure that the computer has at least 6.3 gigabytes of available hard drive space. It's plugged into our power source. This battery lasts forever. I'm not gonna worry about that is connected to the internet. Um, I'm not gonna be able to connect to the internet without uh, wireless card drivers. So I'm just going to have to continue anyway. And actually it got the drivers for me. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to my network. That was pretty nice, even better than Ubuntu, already connected to the wireless network. I'm already liking this much more than Ubuntu. Now I'll come back later and give you some impressions or whatever of the Linux Mint operating system. Maybe I'll wait about a week or two, tell you what I think about it. But right now I'm already liking it. No wireless card driver problems, no like hooking up my phone over USB as a modem so that I can get the drivers, no. No problems at all, came with the drivers I needed. Even though they are proprietary, that's pretty good. Um, I guess I need to click continue. And this way it'll download all the recent updates. Now I did just download this ISO like yesterday. So there shouldn't be any updates, but if there happens to be, then okay. So I am going to erase disk and install Linux Mint. This will delete any files on the disk, so make sure you back up before you do this. You could also do something else, but I'm going to go ahead and erase this disk. Um, I am not going to encrypt because this computer has a terrible time managing that with real-time unencrypted de decryption. It has a hard time managing decryption on the fly, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. And also, uh, local volume management, uh, I'm not going to do that. I do not want any extra options on this install because I just want to make sure it runs nice and smooth. Um, and this computer is sort of a secondary computer for me, so I don't need to worry about imaging it or anything like that. It's just sort of a testing computer. So right now I'm testing out Linux Mint. We're going to go ahead and install now. So uh, we're close enough to Los Angeles. That's probably the closest thing they have on this map. Let's go ahead and click continue. I guess it figured that out based on the internet connection. That's kind of creepy. Um, we want the English US keyboard. Yep, that's what we want. Go ahead and click continue. The Ubuntu installer has sort of simplified these things. Um, they don't really ask you for all this anymore. They do ask you for your name though. So let's go ahead and type in my name. Go ahead and continue. Um, this is actually going pretty well. Um, now it is going to start the copy file process, which is faster over USB drives versus optical media, but it still could take a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this run. Um, I don't know how long it'll take. I'll let you know when it finishes. Of course, it will vary on the speed of your computer. If you're using an SSD, it'll be pretty fast, um, but also it just depends on the speed of the USB key, network speed maybe, anything like that. So it will vary on a computer to computer basis, but I'll still let you know the elapsed time of this. So let's take a look at the slideshow that we see while we're installing. Um, browse the web, and as you can see, they're going to Hulu. Um, I'm not going to zoom in that far because you get some weird artifacting. But as you can see, we have Firefox, Flash, and Java pre-installed. Now these could be security risks, but you could obviously disable them if you're worried about that. I think I might also install Chrome just to have it around. That's my current browser of choice, although I might be switching back to Firefox considering their performance improvements they've been doing lately. It did used to be a real resource hog, but now it's just pretty much equal with Chrome as far as I can tell. So I might try it out actually. Let's go ahead and go to the next page, see what they're telling us about. Listen to music and CDs. Oh, we need to go back. I clicked it as it was moving, so let's go back. Listening to music and CDs. Well, I do not have an optical drive on this computer, but I guess I could hook up a USB one. Um, Amazon MP3 store, that's also pretty interesting. Um, might not be using that, but audio codecs are included, so that might help out. Let's go to the next page, see what they have to offer. 
watch videos and DVDs. Also probably won't be doing this because high definition is really hard on this computer even if it's been played for locally. Um, next slide please. Uh, manage your photos. Yeah, also won't be doing this on co this computer. Uh, 320 gigabyte hard drive, much of which does not exist because of uh, rounding and estimations and stuff. Um, yeah, and also pretty slow. I don't think the screen resolution is very good on this computer either. Staying connected. Yep, this is what I'll be doing with this computer pretty much. Uh, don't really use instant messaging as much, but definitely be checking email and stuff. Um, be productive. Yes, LibreOffice I also use a lot. Um, Google Docs I also use, but especially when you're offline, LibreOffice is nice. Installing software uh, through the software manager. That's pretty nice. Now, Ubuntu did have a software manager, but it did not run very well on this computer, so we'll see how this one stacks up to that. Um, run Windows software, yes, with Wine and VirtualBox. Uh, no, won't be doing that. That takes up too much uh, processor power and just doesn't work out very well on this computer. Uh, customize your desktop. Yep, I might be doing that. Changing backgrounds, moving around icons. Keep your system up to date. Of course, I will be doing that. Uh, that will make sure it is nice and secure. Set it. Find help. This is probably the last one. If you're curious about something or if you're facing a problem, simply ask around. It's the fourth most widely used operating system in the world. Hmm. Well, let's see. Windows, Mac, Ubuntu. I don't know. Maybe there's something else in there, but fourth used Linux Mint, according to this, anyway. Yeah, it's definitely Windows and Mac, though. I don't know. Maybe it's Ubuntu. Who knows? Maybe it's some enterprise IT thing. Or maybe they're counting, like, Windows 7, Windows XP, Mac, and Linux Mint. I don't know. We'll see. Yep, so we're still down here waiting for it to copy files. If you can't see... It's right there. Uh, it kind of blends in on the camera a little bit. Now, I did see on the root of the flash drive, there was included a Windows executable, and I'm assuming that if you were running Lin Windows on your laptop, you could run that. And just like the Ubuntu one, the Wubi software or whatever, you could just, within Windows, configure everything and then configure it up as a dual boot without even leaving the operating system. And then it would just shoot, it would set up the... Windows bootloader and stuff to set it up, but I did not have Windows on this computer prior to this installation. I mean, I did a while back, but I have been running Ubuntu for about a year now, so Linux Mint completely replacing everything. Nothing to worry about. I didn't have any data on this computer. All of it was in my Dropbox folder, so nothing to worry about. Uh, we're installing right now. Still making progress. Uh, this clock is actually right, but it's on 24-hour time, so it's a little bit I don't know. I, I don't really read time from 24-hour time well. I'm used to the 12-hour AM, PM deal. We are almost there. We are so close. Um, down here, there is actually a skip button. Uh, it is grayed out, and you cannot press it, but that would be interesting if you could skip the installation process. Now, you could just run it off a USB flash drive. Actually, when I was setting up the USB flash drive, I put it around a gig persistent partition. So if I wanted to take this USB flash drive, boot it on a different computer, I'd actually have room to save files within the operating system so they'd stay the same every time when I boot. That's why it's called persistent. Um, I'm actually just installing it on this computer right now, but if I did have uh, another computer I needed to run this on, I'm just going to keep this flash drive around and have it available. Now, when new versions come out, I don't know exactly how I'm going to update it. Maybe if I run update with this plugged in, it'll update the flash drive version. I'm not exactly sure, but we'll see how that works out. I may never use it, but it's always nice to have a recovery disk around just in case something goes wrong with your computer, even if it is a Windows computer, just because that way you can test and see if the hardware is working, see if it's just a problem with your Windows installation, if an update went wrong, something like that. Um, we are still almost there. We're installing system now. Uh, the progress bar has reset, but this shouldn't take so long. It's now cons configuring system locales, configuring time zone, configuring keyboard, um, all that great stuff. Creating user. Um, we're still going here. All right, so it looks like we're finishing up here. Um, we installation has finished. You can continue testing, but you will restart the computer. Any changes will 
not be preserved. So we're going to restart now. Um, by the way, that process did take about exactly 12 minutes starting now. That is when we started installing. Um, and it was actually pretty fast. I'm surprised. Uh, it's definitely faster than a Windows installation. And keep in mind, it will vary depending on what computer you're using, which Linux variant you're using, even variations of Linux Mint. I did find that I was unable to get the graphics to work on the Cinnamon front-end version of this Linux Mint 15. Um, so I might recommend just avoiding Cinnamon altogether for this go around. Um, it might work perfectly fine with your computer. In fact, it probably will. That's probably just an incompatibility with my graphics. Um, so we are going to, when we get to this screen though, boot from the local hard drive and that will just bypass booting this USB key. In fact, I'm just going to take it out right now and do control alt delete to reset and that way it'll boot directly from the hard drive. Almost forgot about that. But anyway, what I was saying about Cinnamon, uh, It'll probably work fine on your computer, but if you run into issues, you can definitely switch over to whatever other versions are offered just to make sure things work out. And now we're booting up, it looks like. Maybe. Uh, my computer, it seems like with Ubuntu, it did, the screen would just be black for most of the boot up process. So I don't know if that's different with Linux Mint or if it's just a Linux thing or if it's just a this computer malfunction thing. But anyway, it does work fine once we finally start up. All right, looks like we have a cursor here, so that's a good sign. The USB drive is not plugged in, so we are definitely booting off the hard drive. Um, and here we have, looks like a setup. Of, it's welcome, so let's go ahead and click on my username here and enter my password, which is long and super secret. And now we're almost to the desktop, not quite yet though. I don't know, in Linux is it called the desktop? I'm not really sure assume it probably is, right? I mean, in Ubuntu it is. It's called the desktop. So here we have a welcome screen. Uh, new features, known problems. Let's look at the known problems, just see if there's anything going around in there. Okay, so here we go. Here's the Cinnamon Edition, the one that I could not get to install. Um, known issues. Uh, something required for Linux Mint 15. Could be that my processor was not compatible? I do not know for sure. Uh, EFI support, my computer doesn't do that. HDMI, I don't have that. Other issues, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu 13.04. Interesting. So maybe that, that was the boot up blank screen deal that we are thinking about. I don't know, maybe when Linux boots up, it just, uh, I don't know. It seems like maybe it would have some like I don't know if you call it the command line, but like command line stuff going on. But maybe they just, because in Ubuntu, when you like turned it on and shut down, you'd see all that. Maybe they're just turning off the display so that you don't need to see that. Um, looks like we're good. Uh, I don't have any problem with that. We'll go ahead and close out. But anyway, it looks like we have a menu here. That's actually pretty convenient. It's kind of like the thing in Ubuntu, but I'm assuming we can just add shortcuts down here like this desktop shortcut, uh, store hidden windows. And this menu is actually pretty nice. I kind of like it. Just type in search, like let's search for, I know terminals right there, but we'll search for it anyway. Terminal pop up right there. That's pretty nice. So that's it, I think. I'm going to go ahead and give this some use. Uh, maybe give you some final impressions after using it for a week or two. Um, and maybe a couple months down the line, I'll see if I'll still using it. Give you guys a video about that. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much if you're still watching at the end. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you do what I do and just kind of skip around in the video, you know, that's fine too. Uh, as long as you're enjoying the content, that's great with me. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon with another video.